Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. We're gonna talk about China, we're gonna talk about debt defaults, we're gonna talk about how it's going to affect the rest of the world, especially America. America. All right, here we go. We're gonna link this story below. I'm just gonna go over the bullet points and we're gonna talk about it. If you have not been on this channel before, consider hitting the subscribe button because it feels really good. Just a real quick little note, uh, I read something and it was a scientific research has been conducted and found that all human beings around the world find no more pleasure than literally smashing the like button. It's true, I read it on the internet, so it has to be true. So hit the like button, see how it feels. All right guys, and if you don't like the videos, just hit the thumbs down button twice and I really get the message. YouTube like sends me something. It's very sternly written uh, letter. Guys, do me a favor and put in the comment section where you heard that before. All right, Chinese developer Sunak misses bond repayment, expects to miss more. So we're, we're now, we're in straight up uh, Looney Town, right? We are in uh, debt defaults. Uh, a lot of people would say, yeah, who cares, Ninja? That's in China. Well, you should care because those bonds are in probably more than likely your retirement somehow, either wrapped up into uh, some kind of pension fund, uh, something. And they are, they are here. They're, they're all over the world. But trust me, the whole world's sort of tied together. And if you remember back in 2008, and if you weren't an investor in 2008, I was. Uh, I was selling all my homes in 06 to get ready for that crash. Uh, the, the bank Lehman Brothers, when it finally closed its doors, it had collapsed. We saw Bear Stearns six months prior. It took out the whole world and put us into literally what they call the Great Recession. Sad thing is, this isn't a recession that we're going into. It will be a depression. So now we are at the point, right? I've been talking about this on this channel for about a year now. I think it was July or June. It was the first time I came out and talked about Evergrande and commercial mortgage-backed securities. And to give you an idea how bad they are, literally uh, level 10, 10 times worse than how many uh, mortgage-backed securities there were. And just so you know, they are all <laughs> uh, negative amortization. All right, that's how they work. And so like right now with um, commercial uh, buildings not being fully rented out, uh, lenders do not have to, do, we're not getting all of their money back because the tenants do not, if they're not paying, then the landlord does not have to pay the full pay mortgage payment. Okay, no, it sounds crazy, but that's really happening. All right. So we're gonna dive into the China thing, but I had to give you that background. It says developer uh, Sunak China missed the deadline for coupon payments on a $742 million offshore bond. More than likely most of it's here in America. And said on Thursday, it doesn't expect to make payments coming due on other bonds. Well, that's nice, at least they're letting you know. <laughs> we, uh, we got one over on you and guess what? You're gonna keep getting it. It says, um, adding to a wave of defaults in China's debt-laden property sector. It also says a source close to the company, the nation's uh, third largest property development by sales, said Sunak is considering a restructuring of its offshore debt to extend payments. Why would you even do that? I mean, if you can sort of go to get away and go, well, we're not gonna pay you. Oh, and guess what? We're not gonna keep paying you. Why would you restructure? I mean, how would you restructure that kind of deal? Well, we're not gonna pay you for infinity now. <laughs> okay. Says it's also taking, uh, talking to state-owned entities about strategic investments in the firm. Yeah, you know, that didn't work out. <laughs> I don't know if you ever knew this, but uh, Lehman Brothers, as it was collapsing, was trying desperately to find people like Sunax right now. They're, they're running around going, hey, who wants to invest in our crappy company that can't pay its own bills? And there's people like lining up going, <laughs> no, not me. Uh, and the Japanese were the last holdouts. They were the ones that uh, came over and were trying to negotiate uh, for a piece of Lehman Brothers. It was gonna be a total gut job. Uh, but even the Japanese uh, completely bailed out and now you know where Lehman Brothers is. And you're gonna see this with Sunak and all these other Evergrande, they're gonna be gone. And uh, their government's more than likely gonna bail them out but in a different way. Uh, they're gonna just take over their properties and do you know state-owned sort of uh, stuff. Not as smooth as it was in a 2008, let's put it that way. All right, so it says right here, uh, again, it's a $742 million offshore bond, but remember, the amount of money that's being defaulted on right now is well into the billions, in the hundreds of billions right now. And you're gonna see that coming out in what I believe, uh, quarterly statements by Q3 or Q4 of 2022 in America. There's gonna be uh, hedge funds and pension funds that are going to release the facts, the truth to you. And by then it'll be too late and that's when everything starts tumbling. What we've just experienced in the markets was about almost a 20% uh, drop so far we have farther to go in the major indices uh, and it's 
about to push us into bear market territory. Now, the last time this happened, the Dow Jones fell 19% was the uh, December of 2018. It fell, fell from October to December. And you want to know why? It's the craziest story. I got to tell, let me tell you. So the Federal Reserve, you know, after Lehman Brothers crash, decided, hey, let's just take rates to pretty much zero. 25 basis points, which is a quarter of 1%. And it sat there for a long time and they bought up assets and, and fooled you. It was like the, the wizard at the end of the Wizard of Oz, you know, don't look behind the curtain. And they made it look like everything is well, all the time, all the while building their balance sheet up to an insane amount. And then they said, you know what? Um, everything's falling apart. It's 2015, uh, the markets are about to crash. Nobody really knew this. People like myself did. So I was positioning myself right for it. And what they did is they said, hey, let's start raising rates. And they started raising rates, 25 basis points at a time. Now, you, you know that just the other day, uh, the Fed did a historic 50 basis point hike. And I say historic because the last time that happened was in 2001. It has been two, since 2001 that the Fed was able to raise 50 basis points, or one half of 1%, in one whack. And to give you an idea of how bad that was, that was coming out of the dot-com bust. Um, and 9-11. So horrific times uh, financially and uh, for us as human beings, but that was the last time they'd been able to do it. So in 2015, they were just raising it in little 25 basis point chunks, and they couldn't even get rates to two and a half percent before the whole market started collapsing. And in December of 2019, they said, or sorry, 2018, they said, you know what, that's enough. We're gonna start lowering rates. And then all of a sudden, about a year later, something came out of another country. Weird. Thank you. So point being, sorry, I'm totally thrown off my game. Uh, point being is that uh, they're now raising rates. And I've told you before, I do not believe we're gonna go over 1%. I'd be shocked if the Fed gets it to 1% and we're not in full blown collapse. Uh, because quite frankly, people can't pay their debts. And you're seeing this right now. You're seeing property developers around the world. And I know, I get it. You watch the 60 minute uh, video uh, about China and their craziness as far as having, you know, cities with nobody in there. But you have to remember too, back then they were doing it with a lot of American steel and American money. But right now the whole game is changing and it is getting very, very serious. And I want people to understand that. That's why we give you these daily updates. The collapse is actually happening right now, right in front of your eyes. Um, you just saw Ben Bernanke come out and diss his own boy Jerome. Man, that wasn't really nice because I'm gonna tell everybody something about you in the next video and I'm gonna call you out for being a liar because you, that was lame, that was just lame. All right guys, if you wanna see that other video, guaranteed hit the subscribe button because I promise YouTube will always tell you when my next video comes out. I, yeah, sense of sarcasm. All right, guys, I thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna link the story below. To keep your eye on China. It's way more than Evergrande. We're talking about almost all of their large property uh, companies are going broke right now, right for your eyes. And yes, they are in our pensions in America. And Canada too, can't forget my brothers and sisters in the North. We'll talk to you guys later. The Economic Ninja is out.